Hi everyone, thanks for attending this session. My name is Daniel Liguero and I'm the CTO at Nactiv. And today we are going to share with you our experience using the Google App Project to build part of our platform. Uh, we're a small company uh, founded like two years ago and headquartered in Spain. And we aim to simplify the way that you use Kubernetes in such a way that infrastructure and the knowledge required to operate Kubernetes efficiently doesn't get you into trouble. So we integrate with the standard Kubernetes API. That means we just don't put us in front of every uh, request that goes into the API. We are want to be compatible within the standard API ecosystem. And our focus is to make all the users in your company be able to make use of the infrastructure that you already have from uh, experienced developers to operators, uh, DevOps, data scientists, to non-technical people. All of them should be able at some point to make use of the infrastructure without needing to become a mesper in uh, Kubernetes. For that, we focus on providing a high level abstraction, which is called application, that we are going to uh, talk a little bit more throughout the session. And we want to bring uh, self-service capabilities to everyone so that we reduce all the tickets, the management in between uh, people wanting to create an environment or not installing a new cluster, things like that, right? Uh, in terms of some numbers, uh, I would like to highlight that 35% uh, of our customers are in Asia. So I hope that you enjoyed this talk. So let's go and describe a little bit more uh, about applications in Kubernetes, right? So the main issue we found in Kubernetes is that by default, we don't have an entity called application. We can deploy an application and these pieces using different low level entities such as deployment, stateful sets, uh, jobs, things like that. But at the end of the day, it's quite difficult to get a high level view of what is going on at the application level. Meaning if something is broken, uh, where I need to go, which resource I need to check to make sure that uh, everything is working accordingly. Moreover, uh, one of the issues that we found in Kubernetes is that some of those entities has collateral impact uh, in between them. And sometimes it's not that easy to perceive that if you are not quite experienced working with Kubernetes. So uh, this is where the open application model comes. It's a specification that uh, basically defines uh, the elements that compose an application, which are going to be the components. You can think of components as the microservice, uh, microservices typically, and the traits policies and workflow, which are a method to extend the capabilities uh, of a component or to specify better how you want the application to be deployed. So for example, traits allow us to take an existing component and without changing it, modifying its behavior by exposing an ingress to the outside world, by redirecting logs to uh, another collecting system, things that you as an operator, for example, may want to adapt or as a developer, you want to do because you are debugging an issue and you want a custom configuration for that component. Policies are uh, application level configuration that you can apply to the whole application. For example, imagine you want to set up the debug flag in all the components of an application. A policy can help you do that. Or you want to modify some parameters because of the type of cluster that you are using to deploy the application. A uh, policy can help you with that. And finally, you have a workflow, which is just a simple definition of a workflow and allows you to custom uh, the way that the orchestration of that application will happen, meaning which components will be created before other ones and things like that. Um, while this is what OEM, uh, the open application model, brings in a general level, we need something real that implements it and implement it for Kubernetes, and that is Kubernetes. The Google App project is part of the CNCF as a sandbox project, and hopefully it will become uh, incubated in the in the future. Uh, is the OEM runtime for Kubernetes, and it has some quite nice features. Uh, it has, first of all, a growing community of people using it in production and contributing to the code, uh, and is becoming uh, known in the community. And also has two nice features, which are, uh, first of all, it supports multi-cluster deployments, meaning you can define an application and you can orchestrate it to be deployed at the same time in several clusters, for example. And it also supports multi-tenant environment. So 
you can build uh, a development cluster, for example, where every developer will have an account. They can deploy their own applications uh, as we did in Native, and you can guarantee that the security uh, is maintained among the different environments, right? And moreover, it has uh, quite a extensible uh, API, meaning that you can extend both the OEM and Kubevela by either creating your own trade definitions, component definitions, workflow definitions, or you can set up and install existing add-ons that has been contributed by the community, such as Terraform, for example, uh, that will enable you to create some resources that are needed by the applications that you want to deploy. Helm, if you want to reuse an existing Helm charm as part of an application, uh, as a component, for example, for a database. Uh, you can have uh, Argo or Flags for CI, CD, and GitOps uh, workflows. There is a lot of add-ons that are being created and you can just install them in your cluster and make use of it, right? To give you a little bit more context about when this started, uh, I have created this timeline. You can see on the bottom the history, let's say, of OEM. It started in 2019 and it has had like three major revisions. We are in 3.0 right now. Uh, and the evolution has been basically around how you define components and how you simplify the definition of components while improving the usability of the application among the different actors, right? Google appears as the uh, default runtime for OEM uh, for Kubernetes. It started in mid-2020. Uh, you can see that in mid-2021, it's been accepted in the CNCF. And past year has been quite a lot of movement in the community, a lot of new releases with nice features on every one of them. And we hope that in 2023, it will be the same. It will continue growing community, will continue growing functionality. And it's something that is right now being used in production in several companies. So uh, it's not just uh, an exploratory project, right? So let me uh, go a little bit deeper about how we can use it, uh, how we use it, and how you can also use it in your uh, deployment. So basically, uh, you have the Kubernetes layer on the bottom. Uh, we deploy our native playground uh, on top of Kubernetes, as I mentioned before. And we channel some of the user operations, such as creating environments, deploying applications, uh, things like that, right? So what happens when a user basically uh, deploys an OEM application into one of the environments, a namespace, right? Kubevela, as the operator, will take care of uh, translating that into Kubernetes entities and making sure that everything is consolidated, right? So <clears throat> if we go a little bit more in detail, what happens is an OEM application is read, first of all, and processed by uh, Kubevela. The first process is to render the application, meaning that you will translate all the OEM entities into Kubernetes one. And it is important to understand that this is just not a direct translation into the low level entities uh, that are default in Kubernetes. You can also have components that generate, for example, a CRD that you have installed in your cluster. So it's quite flexible, right? At the end of the day, you are going to render something that is registered on the API, the API resources of Kubernetes. Once you have all the elements that Need, need to be generated, you go into workflow orchestration, right? At this step, what happens is that uh, the workflow associated with the application uh, will be processed. If you don't have specified one, a default one will be used. And this workflow will allow you to do things like deploying a component before deploying another one, because for example, it's a database and you want to set it up before launching the, the backend service. Uh, you can use a workflow to preload some data, for example, in this database before the other components are launched, or you can make use of the API to make calls, for example, to a third party HTTP server, uh, to register your service, to, I mean, uh, possibilities are infinite, right? Once everything is ready, what happens is uh, we are going to go into deployment mode and Google will start creating the entities in the target cluster are needed, right? And it will take care of having everything consolidated. 
So which are the main benefits of this approach and why I think you should also broadly start using this approach for your application, right? The Kubernetes learning curve is not decreasing. Every day is much more complex. Uh, having new people working in the development team is becoming uh, much more complex. There is a lot to learn. Uh, this approach fosters usability. You can publish your application. People, it's much more easier for people to just deploy the application without bothering about the definition and the details. Components are parameterized, so uh, you can specify the parameters for your component so that everybody understands easily what can be tweaked on a component. You can easily extend and adapt applications, and you can basically have an application that is deployable on different cloud services without bothering about the details, right? Like how you create an ingress, for example, from one cloud provider to another, the runtime will take care of, of doing that, right? And the extensions. And it supports multi-cluster, multi-tenant deployments, which are quite nice for uh, development platforms inside the company. So that's it. I hope you enjoy the talk. If you want more information, if you want to start deploying applications in the native playground, just go to the QR code and you can uh, create a free account and start testing it right now. If you want to uh, install Kubebella on your system, go to the official web page, which is kubebella.io and follow the getting started guide to, to get the uh, system installed. And also there is a uh, Kubebella and Kubebella dev channels on the CNCF Slack. Uh, so if you have any question, go there and there will be a lot of people uh, trying to answer you as fast as possible. Thanks again and see you.